Hello, hello everyone. This is Daniel again. And this is part two of the unboxing of my new WRX. Last time, yesterday, we saw the car with the uh, wraps as it comes from the factory. And now, as you can see, those wraps are gone. The car is registered, insured, and officially mined. So that's very exciting for me. And a uh, couple of things here. So let's go around the car. Just check it out now without the plastics. Get a good look. So again, this is uh, the Sport, somewhat equivalent to the American Premium, WRX Premium. I opted for these Parks plates in British Columbia. We have uh, an option to get slightly nicer plates. 40 bucks of that per year is donated to uh, Parks Canada. So I decided why not get the more, um, the fancier plates. And then you'll notice that over here, I decided to get the plate relocate kit. So the plate is relocated to the side. And what that means is that we don't have to drill holes in the front bumper to get the front plate. I live in a province, a state where you have to have front plates. And so generally, if someone wants them located in the middle here, there's actually a special kit that goes onto here uh, however, holes do need to be drilled. There's a little marker, a little dimple right here. It's very hard to see. I don't know if you can in the video, but there is like a tiny d dimple here just above my nail. And we actually drill into that. There's another one right here. We drill into that and then goes a bracket. And uh, onto that bracket would go your plate. So on most cars, uh, most Subarus, most SUVs definitely, would have that set up, but if you want uh, a relocation of the plate, you do want to do that ahead of time. Um, if you're picking up a new car, let your salesperson know that that's what you want to do. That way they won't drill the holes there. They'll just wait for you. You'll have to get uh, a relocate kit. So it comes with a little stem and then some other components and then you put the plate onto it. So this just goes where the tow hook normally goes. So I'm excited about that. I do think it looks awesome and I like the color combination with the red. So that's the car all ready to go. And this is an unboxing after all. So I thought I would do a couple of things on video and mainly removing this little piece right here. So let's take a look at that. I already did the honors removing the uh, little film from the pedals, so that's gone. I couldn't really drive it otherwise, it was too slippery. So let's go ahead and remove this. Ah, so satisfying. Great, so that's out of the way. Let's do a few more. So there is still a film right here. Let's remove it, done. The rest have already done, so that's that. Stick that in here for now. And you can see the cloth now, so there's no more no more plastics. I guess some they still left there, but that's that. So this is the cloth in all its glory. I'll show you the back quickly. It's very nice cloth. I would have preferred to have the Alcantara from the uh, Sportec or the uh, American Limited, but uh, that's life. And I went with the uh, uh, the better savings and the better deal in my opinion and went from uh, for the premium. For one reason or another, in the Canadian specification, uh, the mid trim level was not originally supposed to have a Harman Kardon sound system, but it does. Uh, so somehow in this year, only on the manual transmission uh, mid-trim level, you do actually get the Harman Kardon. Let me see if I can, if I can point it out. So there, there it was. I'll try to show it through the window. All right, so that right there is the subwoofer for the Harman Kardon sound system. There are 11 speakers around the car. And 
you can see the uh, emblem for, for it right here, Harman Kardon. So uh, again, this uh, trim level not doesn't usually come with the Harman Kardon, but this year, whether it's a mistake or not, I'm not exactly sure, but they did include it. Uh, but only on the manual trim level, not on the automatic uh, mid trim level, which was really interesting. I don't think that they will keep it for next year that way. I do think it was either a supply constraint or some sort of a mistake, but uh, it's definitely an amazing upgrade and, and definitely helped me uh, get this trim level instead of a trim level up from there. We're getting up to the five or six minute mark, so kind of wanted to cap it around here. Um, but before we do that, before we go, I just wanted to turn on the car, give you an impression here. Let me roll up the windows first. Maybe you'll get the sound of the engine that way. Let's take a look. You also, you also get to see the infotainment system. So pretty nice infotainment system. Um, it was very great to have these uh, climate controls as physical buttons in the previous generation. Fortunately or unfortunately, they are in the screen. Makes it a bit, makes it more sleek, but it does cause some anno annoyances, such as having to tap multiple times just for basic functions. But it is, it is what it is. Um, so yeah, that's the screen. Let's have a look at the uh, dash here. We've got 15 kilometers on the car, so that's about 10 miles. Normally for a new car, you're looking for under 30 kilometers. So I guess in miles, that would be 20 miles or under. That would still be considered a new car that's within spec. And uh, let's turn it on here, get a sound sample of the engine. Hope All right, so my mistake here, I tried to uh, turn on the car, but I think I clicked the uh, stop recording button as I did it. So let's go ahead and start the car for you. All right, so we clutch in, this turns green. So I'm not sure if you could hear that start. Um, this is a hot start. I've, I've ran the car already, so it doesn't start as loudly. These cars actually are quite loud um, on a cold start. It revs a little higher and is quite a bit louder. But uh, once, once they're warmed up, they calm down quite a bit and quiet down a little bit. So, so that's where we are now. So this is a, a second review, second part of the unboxing. Uh, I'm showing you the, the car fresh, ready to go with the plates on, um, ready for a drive. And the third part I think should be a review of how it actually drives. I just have to figure out where to put the camera to give you guys the best angle uh, for viewing the car. And uh, that's about it. See you in part three.